I love R and Tableau. Tableau is super powerful. However, for some data science applications, we sometimes need additional help from programming languages such as R or Python. I personally prefer R over Python. And the reason is that generally R is stronger at statistics while Python is stronger at machine learning. So here's a quick overview. Uh, we'll start with a business problem, create a synthetic data set based on real events which happened to Facebook. Then we'll cover the basic of Benford's law and look at some data science tools. And finally, run the algorithm live. Fake invoices are a nasty, nasty business problem. According to the FBI, every year companies lose billions to fake invoices. For example, here, um, it was reported in 2019 that Facebook alone lost around $100 million in fake invoices. So based on what happened to Facebook, we created a synthetic data set. The data set comprises of several vendors such as A, B, C, and so on. And each vendor comprises of several thousands of invoices. So similarly to what happened to Facebook, at least one of those vendors sent us fake invoices with a total of $100 million. As data scientists, we want to create an algorithm to catch fraudsters. But we also want to catch them early. And on top of it, we also want to create the least possible number of false positives or false alarms. And this is not so easy. We don't know how fraudsters create fake invoices, but that's kind of okay. The purpose of a synthetic data set is not to understand how fraudsters really work, but rather to compare, to compare the accuracy of different algorithms. So here on the left, we see invoices based on Benford's law. We'll discuss Benford's law in a second. And here on the, on the right, we created fraudulent invoices by randomizing invoice amounts. For example, the following R code creates us 10,000 invoices ranging from $10 to $1,000. So to, to catch fraudsters, we need a, a technique. And one possible technique is Benford's law. Benford's law essentially states that the sequence of numbers is likely to be distributed in a specific way. In other words, lower digits have a higher probability of occurring than higher digits. Let's use a bit less math. So as you can see in the middle part, the expected distribution is derived from the log normal transformation. Essentially, the log normal transformation gives us the, um, the expected probability for each digit. For example, invoices starting with the digits 10 are expected to appear 4.14%. Or in a statistical language, the Benford distribution is highly skewed to the right as they go down, low, down, and down, and non-parametric. In other words, parameters such as standard deviations do not work here. And as a side note, if you Google Benford's law, most of those articles are about Benford's version covering digits one to nine. However, in this case, we are using a, a more advanced version, uh, which observes the digits 10 to 99. So where does Benford's law work best? Well, in general, Benford, Benford's law works best where human event numbers. In other words, where we humans have to come up with numbers such as invoices, and for example, dollar $5,135, 12,560. Mostly in financial accounting, this is the area where Benford's law works generally best. Now let's go into Tableau and look at uh, two sample data sets. Here first we have the vendor B and the invoices confirm pretty much to Benford's law. The purple line represents Benford's expected distribution. So on the x-axis, we have the numbers 10, to 99. And on the y axis here, we have the frequency of the observed distribution in percentages. And as we saw before, the expected distribution starts at around 4% here, and then it goes lower and lower. 
In data science, this is one of the most important visualization types, and it's called a histogram. A histogram has a, a categorical data type on the x-axis. In our case, the x-axis consists of bins ranging from 10 to 99. And on the y-axis, we have a measure. Why is a histogram so important? Well, one reason is because it can easily visualize anomalies in our data. Now let's look at the vendor where the distribution deviates strongly from Benford's expected distribution. And let's switch to Z. For example, here we can see a huge spike for invoices starting with the digit 62. This here indicates a potential fraud. But of course, we don't want to manually check each vendor if they confirm or not. This is why we create an algorithm which does this job for us automatically, around the clock and in near real time. Now, one of my favorite topics is the Monte Carlo simulation. The Monte Carlo algorithm is one, basically one of the most influential algorithms of the last or of the 20th century. The algorithm is used in many fields such as physics, engineering, finance, and in our core case, statistics. The Monte Carlo simulation helps us to determine the sample size at a given confidence level. For example, how many samples do we need to be 95% confident that the sample size is sufficient. This is what we're trying to accomplish here with the R code snippet. On the right, we can see visually the results of a Monte Carlo simulation. The part in gray covers the 95% and the part in red covers the remaining 5%. Now let's look at the Tableau dashboard for fake invoice monitoring we've created. Technically, we can never be 100% sure if a data set is fraudulent or not. Therefore, we need a somehow of a probabilistic approach. For example, here, we have a total risk of around $200 million in fake invoice at the 95% confidence level. And here with, let's zoom in here a bit, let's say here, and with Tableau's parameters, we can control the confidence level. For example, we could change the confidence level to 99% or 90% in this case. But if you go at the high level, let's say 99%, we reduce the risk of false alarm or false positives considerably. In other words, because we force the algorithm to predict only if it is extremely confident, we should have a lower number of false positives or false alarms. However, there's a trade-off. As we force the algorithm to predict only if it's very confident, it's slower as it requires more data. Since we are in Germany, I do a, a football analogy. In general, uh, in a football game, the more time has passed, the more confident we should be to predict the winner. While in a football game, our confidence increases with time, with invoice fraud, our confidence increases with the number of sample invoices. Tableau is pretty start, pretty easy to start with. However, it also allows us to do advanced statistical analysis as well, even though Tableau is technically not a programming language. In other words, sometimes it's possible to start a statistical analysis in R or Python and then convert it to Tableau code. This is pretty cool because then we don't have to rely on a connection to R or Python. With fraud, there is one particularly tricky part. For example, let's say we have a hundred vendors and one of these vendors is fraudulent. Now, if our algorithm predicted all the time non-fraud, the accuracy of the algorithm or the number of times the algorithm would be correct is 99%. That's extremely high but totally useless as we would not catch any fraudster. Therefore, we need a slightly different measure, such as statistical measure is sensitivity. With sensitivity, we want to know how many cheaters we caught with the least possible numbers of false negatives, meaning fraudsters we missed. For example, if there's one fraudster, a true positive, and we correctly identified it without missing one, false negative, we get a sensitivity of 100%, the highest number possible. In medicines such as uh, corona tests, sensitivity indicates the ability of a test to correctly identify patients that have COVID. If you have experience in machine learning, 
sensitivity is also known as recall. It's the same. So in our case, we tested several algorithms and at the end we could improve the algorithm so that we achieved a sensitivity of 100%. In other words, the algorithm caught all cheaters. Now it's the moment of truth. Let's see if Benford's law in action and uh, so it's January. I know we have to we have to create the date. So here we have in a data set we have uh, Tuesday, January first, two thousand and nineteen, oh, which is similar to Facebook when when they announced uh, the losses. So now we have in our case we have a, a loss invoice fraud of two hundred million dollars. However, our goal is to catch fraudsters as early as possible, and in order to see how early would have caught them, we need to go back in time. So let's go back from 2019 to, to the very beginning of the data set to uh, January 2014. So we can see that our total risk was at zero. Let's go to Feb, maybe February. So we have, we've been all gone ahead about five weeks and still the algorithm has not detected anything yet. Now we go to maybe early March, nothing yet. April 12th, so we, after about what's that, two and a half, four months, our algorithm already detected the first fraudster. At this stage, the loss would have been at around $5.6 million. Of course, this is a lot. However, it's a fraction to compare to what Facebook lost with $100 million. So again, this the algorithm has to, to analyze all the invoices. Those are about 200,000 invoices in this case automatically and if they had been plugged into a database it would be in real time and one of the biggest part is as early as possible last but not least automation can make domain experts more effective in this example in step one we get our invoices from our database in step two the algorithm scans all invoices automatically and in near real time and in step three we get automatically an alert if the algorithm detects a potential fraud. In other words, all the mundane work is done by the algorithm. However, once the algorithm triggers an alert, the domain expert takes over. So it is not algorithm versus human, but rather algorithm and human, which probably delivers the most effective results. So here we are in our conclusion and uh, bringing an algorithm into production is often quite a challenge. With Tableau, however, we can create relatively easy the algorithm or the code it easily and implement it quickly and to scale it quickly many users. And in general, the proposed algorithm should reduce invoice fraud by up to 80%. Thus, the combination of R and Tableau can save companies billions. Thank you.